Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming, Cyberpunk's devs are owning up to their mistakes, EA made a surprise move to buy a game studio, scalping is worse than anyone could imagine, and much more. It's no surprise that Cyberpunk 2077 is a very demanding game given its next-gen tech and cutting-edge graphics, but the situation is pretty dire on last-gen consoles, so much so that the game's developers issued a public apology about the game's state, specifically on last-gen hardware. Before its launch, CD Projekt Red mandated that reviewers only use pre-recorded footage when talking about the game and didn't give out console review codes. This has led to many players and news outlets to speculate that the devs knew the state of the game on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One was a train wreck, but chose to hide it. And while their apology doesn't outright say that much, they acknowledge their lack of transparency was a problem. As for what they plan to do about the situation, they've released one significant update so far to address critical bugs and issues, and another update will launch in about a week. These big updates will continue to roll out after the holidays with two large updates in the new year. The first will launch in January, and the second will go live in February. Combine these patches should address most of the issues with the game's last-gen console versions. The devs caution players against expecting a radical transformation, though. Don't expect your PlayStation 4 or Xbox One to suddenly run the game like next-gen hardware. That said, I don't think anyone really expects them to. These consoles turned seven years old last month. By gaming hardware standards, that's practically antique. But at the same time, it's not unreasonable to expect a stable experience without jarring bugs and obvious performance issues. CD Projekt Red does encourage console players upset at the state of the game to request a refund through Sony or Microsoft. Many players have already done so, and it seems like both companies are granting refunds, no questions asked. That said, many players also bought physical copies of the game through retailers that might not be so quick to issue a refund. For those cases, CD Projekt Red has set up an email that players can contact them through until the 21st. Overall, it has been disappointing to see such a big experience discrepancy between the platforms that Cyberpunk 2077 runs on. On PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X, the game is much closer to the intended vision, but it does still suffer from some performance issues. And while I go so far as to say that it does run fine on PC with top-tier hardware, that hardware is well above the game's recommended specs. It's clear CD Projekt Red still have a lot of work to do not only with ironing out the game's bugs, but also getting it to just run as well as intended. The good news is, in lieu of official updates, there are already a few things players can do to improve how Cyberpunk runs. PCGamingWiki.com lists some community developed performance fixes for the game. And while these can usually be more or less snake oil, it seems like CD Projekt Red have made some minor mistakes with the game's config files. While I expect the devs to fix these mistakes in official patches quickly, for now the community solutions apparently offer decent performance boosts. In a stunning move, EA are trying to acquire racing game devs Codemasters for $1.2 billion. Codemasters has apparently been up for grabs for about a month or so, with Take-Two looking to scoop them up for $994 million. Codemasters currently handles the F1 and Dirt series. EA's two major racing game franchises, Need for Speed and Burnout, have both seen a resurgence in the past few years. Both franchises recently got full remasters of their more classic titles. But they're both more arcadey racing games and it leaves EA in the wind when it comes to the massive world of sim racing. Adding Codemasters to their roster would give EA a foot in the racing sim door. EA has recently just seen massive success with Star Wars Squadrons, a sim-like dogfighting game. And while the acquisition might come at a heavy cost, it would make EA much more competitive in the racing world game genre. The deal will be finalized next year if it actually happens. 2020 has been the year of so many things, but in the gaming hardware world, it's been the year of the scalpers. And the actual numbers behind scalping sales is shocking. AMD, Intel, Nvidia, Microsoft, and Sony have all struggled to meet the demand of their new products thanks to manufacturing shutdowns caused by the pandemic. In the vacuum created by the hype for their products and the scalpers' ability to scoop them up so easily, real-world customers have been left high and dry. New analysis of sales data shows that scalpers raked in $19 million in profit, selling 33,000 PlayStation 5s on eBay as of December 1st. 
30,000 Xboxes were sold as well in the tune of $10 million profit. The vast majority of these sales were around $1,000 per unit, which clearly indicates they were sold by scalpers. So far, it seems like retailers have been unable to stop scalpers from buying stock. eBay have been taking down fraudulent posts for stuff like empty boxes and printed pictures of hardware, but they've done nothing about the grossly inflated pricing for legitimate hardware. Newegg recently started combating this problem by selling new CPUs and GPUs in bundles with less desirable hardware like power supplies and random PC parts. However, they were a bit short-sighted as until now customers could easily return the bundle item and keep the GPU or CPU. Newegg have since changed their refund policy so customers can only return the entire bundle. And while Newegg has been one of the worst offenders when it comes to getting hardware in the hands of actual customers, this policy change is a smart move. It probably won't deter scalpers, but it might slow down their bots and encourage them to target single listings, leaving the bundles for actual people. One bit of good news for gamers looking to buy a next-gen console is that Sony and Microsoft will be restocking Best Buy tomorrow as part of a three-day sale. It's unclear how many consoles the retailer will have on hand, but it should be pretty big considering that this is basically the last push for sales before the holidays. Major story details for the upcoming game Resident Evil Village made their way online thanks to a ransomware attack on the game's developer Capcom. The attack was one of the biggest in the gaming industry's history. It compromised Capcom's upcoming games, future plans, launch schedule, active development plans, employee info, and potentially even player info. And while it's unclear if the new Resident Evil leaks are valid, it seems very likely that they are. They're apparently from a development build of the game and come mostly as screenshots and written accounts of the game's plot. Details include the game's ending, story events for returning characters, and new enemies that haven't been officially revealed. If you're a fan of the franchise and eagerly waiting for Village's launch, I would highly recommend trying to avoid these leaks however possible. IO Interactive released the opening cinematic of their upcoming game Hitman 3 and it's suitably epic. The game follows the franchise's iconic main character Agent 47 on a mission of revenge against the organization that made him a super assassin. That's been the core plot of the past two Hitman games. With his third game likely being the final one for this chapter of the franchise, it seems likely players will finally get a nice conclusion to Agent 47's story. The cinematic showcases multiple locations in Saudi Arabia, though it's unclear how many of them will be playable locations aside from Dubai which was shown off earlier this year. Ubisoft's game subscription service, creatively titled Ubisoft Plus, is rolling out for Google Stadia on the 16th. Ubisoft Plus grants subscribers unlimited access to most of Ubisoft's games and comes in at $15 a month. For folks that don't own a console or PC, you can now use Stadia to stream those games at no additional cost. You don't need to be a Stadia subscriber, you just need compatible hardware, which in most cases is only a computer, Android device, or Google Chromecast and Stadia controller. In our final story today, the Season 1 update for Black Ops Cold War officially goes live tomorrow at 2 a.m. Pacific time. So if you're looking to get in on the action and you live in the United States, it seems like you'll be staying up later or waking up very early. The update adds a ton of new content to Cold War and also fully integrates it with Warzone. Warzone players will get all 30 of Cold War's weapons, a new map called Rebirth Island, new operators, cosmetics, and more. This update is a big deal for longtime players as it's the first major content update for Warzone in months and is the first new map they've gotten since launch. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. Things have been so absolutely wild this holiday season. Let me know in the comments down below what story you thought was the most interesting. If you did enjoy today's video, leave a like, subscribe for more content like it in the future, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.